my actual professional background as far as professional training in the field of assistive technology is self-taught. Um, my son is the one who actually led me into my field. I was taking classes here at Wright State leading more towards computer science and engineering. Uh, my son is uh, quadriplegic and uh, non-oral. He received his first communication device and I fell in love with his technology. But uh, as I went through training on the device, I discovered that people were not getting adequate training on them. So I decided what I really wanted to do instead of designing equipment for people with disabilities, I really wanted to do more training. So I ended up changing my major to uh, rehabilitation services and got my bachelor's in that. I did my volunteer work over at what used to be St. Elizabeth's Hospital and um, was able to do a lot of work in augmentative communication, uh, specializing in devices like my son had. Wright State, uh, the Disability Services Office, was opening up an adaptive computer lab. It was predominantly for students with disabilities, and the deal was I had to learn all of the equipment. So I agreed to it, and I then uh, was a teaching assistant the second time they offered it, and um, I did my practicum for, the, for my uh, degree in the computer lab, and we found that students would come in and ask for help if someone was in the lab. They wouldn't go and ask for help if no one was there. They needed somebody with an assistive technology background. It was a brand new field at the time. And so uh, Disability Services was looking at that. They had some turnover in the department at the time. So they did some restructuring of the positions. And when they did that, they actually created a position for an assistive technology specialist. And I competed for the job, and the rest is history. I've been here for 23 years now. I love the people I work with. I love the staff that I work with. And more than anything, I love the students I work with. Going back to school was my big break, and meeting the right people uh, here at Wright State was my big break, and it was all because God led me to it. Um, Rob's disability, it wasn't God's plan from the very beginning that that was what was going to lead me into it, but he used Rob's disability to get me into this field. I would have never gone into this kind of work if it had not been for him and his disability. Um, it's his, his equipment gave me the love for this and then in working with him and then once I started working with the students through my practicum, I realized that what I really wanted to do was work in this kind of a setting and uh, then once I started here, I realized that this is where I really wanted to be. I think my crowning achievement as a professional is when I see students blossom, especially when they're using technology, and they're able to achieve things they could not achieve before. And there's so many times when we can make a difference in their lives, and that's what gives me my crowning achievement. It's not what really what I do, it's what the students are capable of doing. And being able to bring that out, help, help them realize their potential, and help them see what they're capable of doing, is the best thing in the world for me. My number one personal achievement um, has to do with my son. Um, he's absolutely the greatest there is. And uh, getting to see him grow and develop himself and getting to watch him, he was not expected to live to see two. Um, he was thought to have a significant uh, degenerative brain disease and we were actually told to just put him in an institution and forget him because he would deteriorate mentally and not be able to recognize us and he wouldn't know anything and we should just forget him and let him go before we would be too close and we said no my husband and I did and um, took him home and taught him and uh, he went to school he graduated from Fairborn High School with a diploma. He's uh, 39 now, so for someone who wasn't supposed to make it to two, that's quite an achievement on his part and God's part. Uh, but getting to watch him grow and develop and see his sense of humor, uh, for me personally, that's incredible. Um, and the other part is for me to grow spiritually. 
you had to summarize your life's work in a single word, what word would you choose and why? Faith. Life is full of hills and valleys and lots of challenges. We've had a lot of them, haven't we? Um, getting through them is not easy. There are times when you don't want to go through them, but you do. You have to accept and go through what you're given, whether you want to or not. However, with faith and God's help, you can get through anything. I grew up in a very strong Christian home. I have two older brothers. My parents were very strong um, models. My dad especially. Um, if there was a, a true model of a um, godly man, that was my dad. He patterned for us. My mother was a stay-at-home mom, which was great. She was almost always there at home when we got home from school. Um, they, they patterned for us what a marriage was supposed to be. And a true mentor and my, my dad also was the greatest encourager for me. And so was my mother. My husband believed in what I could do. Um, he wanted me to work. At times we butted heads on it. Finally realized that what I was doing was what, in going back to school and trying to complete my degree, that I was doing what God wanted me to do. My mentors became my supervisors, my original supervisor and my longtime supervisor up until a few years ago was my associate director and then he became my director, Jeff Renoy. Um, he was a mentor for me and our, my uh, original director was Steve Simon. Um, the two of them showed me what it meant to work with students with disabilities and how to advocate for them. And as a result of that, it be, helped me to become a stronger advocate for my son. If what I have gone through can help one person, even one, um, whether it be a young woman who is struggling or a young man who's struggling with their life, then I have lived a good life. I have robbed, but I won't have grandchildren to leave my legacy to. So I'm hoping that I'm leaving my legacy to um, students here at Wright State and hopefully people at our church as well.